Number three, you're gonna find the value of each variable in the parallelogram. There are unique properties of a parallelogram that allows us to set up the equation. So let's solve for z first. We know that this line up here has to be congruent to this line here because these are pairs of opposite sides. They are congruent. So we can set up the equation 2z plus 1 is equal to 4z minus 5. Now we can essentially solve for the z. Subtract 2z to both sides. This does cancel, leaving you with a 1 equal to 2z minus 5 plus 5 to both sides. So this is cancel, leaving you a 6 is equal to 2z. Now from here, we can then divide by the 2 to both sides. 2 over 2 cancels, leaving you with a 3 on the left is equal to z. Next, we know that the left side is also going to be congruent to the right-hand side because the opposite pairs of sides for a parallelogram are congruent. So we know that 4w is going to be equal to w plus 3. We want to get rid of the smaller variable first, so I'm going to subtract w to both sides. w and the w on the right does cancel. 4w minus w is 3w equals to the 3 on the right. Divide by 3 to both sides. 3 over 3 does cancel, leaving you with just a w is equal to 3 divided by 3, it is 1. So z is 3, w is 1. Those are the variables that we are looking for. Next, okay, we have this, okay. Now, we know that the diagonals bisect. So this is going to be the same as this because the diagonals bisect. Then we know that this diagonal, which is left to right, bisects as well. Okay, so that gives us our two parts. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna solve for my f first. So 2f minus 5 is equal to 5f minus 17. Okay, I'm gonna subtract 2f to both sides, leaving you with a minus 5 equals to 3f minus 17 plus 17 to both sides. This gets you a 12 is equal to 3f. Then you want to divide by 3 to both sides. 3 divided by 3 is just f. Then you have 12 divided by 3, which is 4. The next equation, it is the blue part. So that's the f plus 2 is equal to the g. We know what the f is. The f that we solved for from before was 4. So we can substitute that in. Okay, then we have plus 2 is equal to g. 4 plus 2 is 6. That equals to g. Okay, this equation required us to solve for f first, then substitute it in. Next, let's see for c. Okay, we know that the angles here, uh, we know that this angle is congruent to this angle. So we could set those two equal to each other, but that's going to be useless because do we have two different variables? Then we have this is congruent to this. I just don't want to c cover it. Okay, that's useless because the um, these two have two different variables. We need to know the relationship between that red arc and that black arc. We know that the consecutive interior angles for a parallelogram are supplementary. Therefore, we could set up this equation. We have that B minus 10, which is the two red arcs, plus that black arc, which is B plus 10, is going to be equal to 180 because the consecutive interior angles are, again, supplementary. B plus B, it is 2B minus 10 plus 10, just cancels, leaving you with a zero, and you have a 180 on the left. Divide 2 to both sides. You, that cancels, leaving you with a B is equal to 90. Now you have this. Now you can solve for the other one. So we know that B minus 10 is equal to C. Let's just make that substitution. Uh, B was 90. That's what we got from before. 90 minus 10, it is 80. That equals to C. Then we have the other piece. D is equal to B plus 10. Let's make that substitution. B was 90. Okay, so we have D is equal to 90 plus 10. That gets you D equals to 100. So there you go. This equation re required us to set up the supplementary equation for the consecutive interior angles. Then we did two other equations, setting them congruent to solve for the variables. There you go.